Welcome to the 32 team King of the Hill tournament. One team will be randomly selected to defend the hillside while all the others attempt to knock them off. This will be decided by head to head matchups. Oh, by the way, if the defending team successfully upholds the attack from the opposing team, they'll get to ransack a player from their squad to help fortify their position on top of the hill. Winning games should prove to be huge. But one loss and you're out of the tournament for good. We're now about to find our lucky or maybe unlucky team out of the 32 that will be defending the top of the hill first the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now for our first attacking team out of the 31 teams that we have left. Oh, geez, the Buffalo Bills. This should actually be a really good first game. In our first game, both Trevor Lawrence and Josh Allen duked it out in a tightly contested battle, leaving Buffalo with one drive to stay alive. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. 53 seconds to do it. The first one's incomplete. Remember, no timeouts. They need at least seven just to force an overtime. The set... What is Josh doing? I don't know, man. This is laughable so far. Absolutely four down territory for him. This one is caught for a first. We're down around the 22nd mark now. You got to hit the sideline. Tackle it in bounds. Uh oh, this is about to be it. They're going to get two plays off. One, zero. That's so embarrassing, Buffalo. I hate to say it. What the heck was that, though? Just like that, the Bills have been eliminated from the King of the Hill tournament, and Jacksonville will get to steal a player from them. With their definite need on the defensive line, the Jaguars are going to acquire X-Factor Vaughn Miller. Welcome to Jacksonville, Vaughn. I am very happy to be here. We're going back to the wheel of NFL teams. The next opponent, there's some good ones off rip. We got the Seattle Seahawks. We got a 79 overall team versus an 81 overall team. By the way, the Jaguars have a new top dog. Welcome back to Jacksonville for game number two. The game started off super low scoring for both sides and Vaughn Miller quickly made his presence known. Scoring did end up picking up though and a late touchdown to Jackson Smith and Jigba gave Seattle a late lead in the fourth quarter, putting all the pressure on Trevor Lawrence and the Jags. Wow, the way that these first two games played out, very entertaining. It is quickly third down though. That's a great catch. All three timeouts still at their disposal. Oh, that was such a dumb idea to go with play action there. What is happening? That's a deep pass. That's a laser. We got a big touchdown. Oh, what a play. They put the ball in Seattle's court. Tila coming up huge. That was downright incredible. The pressure is now on Geno Smith. He needed a touchdown with only 30 seconds. I mean, they do have the weapons. Don't get me wrong. And that will definitely help. Here we go, Seattle. Get a catch. Immediate timeout. How is he so open? This is Jigba again. They made it downfield to the 19. And what was it? 10 seconds? Blue for the two. Oh, hey, I did. He hiked it. He sees a look. It's an out. Inside the 10 now. It does not get any more exciting than this. King of the Hill tournament on the line. Somebody's going to be eliminated with this play right here. It's going to be Jacksonville. Seattle with an insane fourth quarter drive. I hope we have more games like that. That was amazing. So Jacksonville is officially eliminated. Seattle will move up into their spot. To be clear, they don't get a chance to steal a player from the Jaguars. They only get that when defending their land. And we're going to find out who they're going up against right now. The attacking team will be the Vikings. It seemed like the Vikings defense just couldn't hold up against all of Seattle's weapons, giving the Seahawks the win and allowing them to acquire Justin Jefferson, making their wide receiver room quite possibly unstoppable. The next King of the Hill attacker was the Indianapolis Colts. And no surprise here, JJ made a few big plays to easily help his team knock off another opponent, also granting them with another player, Quinton Nelson. We quickly moved on to team number five, which was the New England Patriots. And under Bailey Zappi, all heck broke loose in their first drive of the game. And let's just say things didn't exactly get better from there. Matthew Judon was injured, so we had to go with their next best option, which was Trent Brown yeah. at left tackle. With all these wins, Seattle is starting to build up quite a good roster that these NFL teams should maybe starting to get a little bit scared of. This wheel spin right here will be Seattle's fifth game, fourth time defending. We have a tough matchup versus the Cleveland Browns. They have a good roster. We're hopping on in here to the fourth quarter. This is insane what the Seahawks are doing here. All right, here we go. I mean, not that they have a chance at all, but if this fourth down 11 goes with how the rest of this game has been, no surprise here. Wow, of course. <laughs> Let's move forward here. That play didn't really matter. 34 to 6 victory for the Seahawks. They are remaining at the top of this hill. It's time for them to acquire none other than Miles Garrett. And they are about to get a whole lot more powerful. My powers have doubled since the last time we met. Twice the pride, 
Double the four. We got the Tennessee Titans next. Against all odds, the Titans not only put up a fight, but they managed a two-score lead heading in to the final quarter of the game. I don't know how this has happened. Despite them being backed up, Seattle started to move the ball. Big third and two. They got another one. Here we go again. This game is definitely not over yet. The two minute warning hits, but we're inside the five. We got a super spreader offense. No offense. As easy as can be. And hold on just one moment. Seattle just needs a stop. They're gonna run, milk clock. That's not a first down. Here it is to eliminate Seattle from the hill. And Derrick Henry and the Titans do it. The super squad has been upset and we have a new king of the hill. I will say Seattle just wasn't fortunate enough to verse a team that had a quarterback that they could steal. The Titans would definitely like to do that. Not gonna get a chance here though. We got the Falcons. This game was a sloppy one. No offense was really able to get in a groove whatsoever. Check this out. We have another team that's in jeopardy of getting knocked off the hill. I will say this. Bijan has maybe been the only bright spot on either side of each offense. Tennessee is not exactly looking hot. That might have just done it. And yeah, just like that, the Falcons nail the ball out and we have another new king of the hill defender. Congratulations to them, Tennessee Titans. You're gone forever. No! Washington was up next to attack. Though it was a tight one, the Falcons were able to take care of the Washington Commanders, granting them Terry McLaurin at a much needed wide receiver position. Their next matchup was against the Bengals, and they didn't seem to be prepared for Joe Mixon, who scored not one, not two, but three touchdowns to give us yet another king of the hill. There was now a chance for them to defend versus the league's worst team, the Carolina the Panthers. And even with Jake Browning at quarterback, let's just say that this game was a clear no contest. Since he picked up one of the only good players on the Panthers, Brian Burns. After that, they met up with the Green Bay Packers who heavily relied on their defense. And it turns out that's all that they really needed. Green Bay is already our sixth team to become a new King of the Hill defender. They now are gonna have to get through the New York Giants. Welcome on in G-Men to Green Bay. Insanely enough, the Giants, out of all teams, ended up obliterating the Packers. So it's time to make a change. Yeah, it's time to break the chains. Yeah, it's time to bring the pain. Let them know, tell them we are not the same. I'm the one, I'm the one that got the flames. When my team, as you know, we come to slay. Let them know that we I can't believe what I just witnessed with my own two eyes. 30 to three with Tommy DeVito at quarterback. This has to be the most unpredictable tournament we've ever done. Still a lot of teams left to go here. The Arizona Cardinals. I'm sure I'm not just speaking for myself when saying I'm shocked the Giants have a chance to defend the hill at home. But um, yeah, they didn't do too good of a job at it. The Arizona Cardinals have a chance to defend the hill. Their opponents, will be the Broncos. We're just gonna fast forward here in this game. It's over, the Cardinals lost, nobody's surprised. Broncos are now our new king of the hill yet again. These teams just can't seem to catch a streak. Man, oh man, I know we've been dealing with some not great teams, but come on. Whew, we are now at Mile High Stadium. And hey, guess what? It looks like we have another team that doesn't know how to win after getting up on top of the hill. We need to see 97 yards and then an onside kick with throws like that. Fourth down. I mean, you gotta be a real believer if you think that the Broncos have any sort of a chance here. There it is. Tampa Bay moving on top of the hill. Denver, yeah, whatever. See you later. You're a disappointment like all these other teams. There's a team, maybe even the New York Jets. If they win this, they might be able to start streaking. The Buccaneers took the Jets to school and put them down so bad that they may never want to see another one of these tournaments again. And as I'm sure you could tell, the Jets have all but given up here what an impressive performance by Tampa Bay. Gotta give them credit. And they're also gonna be able to add a player. There was no question they needed help in the secondary and that Sauce Gardner was gonna be that guy. Whew. Who's the next squad? We got the Raiders. Yeah, Raiders! This matchup ended up being one of the best that we've seen in quite some time. Followed up by one of the most clutch connections from Baker Mayfield to Mike Evans down at the one yard line with minimal time left with a chance to tie the game. Here we go. One timeout, Baker rolls out. Mike Evans is down, he's not in. Here we go, fourth down and goal on the one. And the Bucks are five wide. They have him when they got it. We might be talking about overtime. For overtime. And it's Barry. We have our first overtime, people. Buccaneers are gonna be getting the ball first. Run, Rashad White got room. 
big one to start. Already at the 40, it was time for Baker to really prove himself. <laughs> oh my gosh, Baker Mayfield. Oh my gosh, no he didn't. Vegas might be on top of the hill. They just need a field goal. There we go, Josh Jacobs. Oh, he ain't lit up, but it looks like he is. And we're looking at the line in front of us, the red line to be in field goal range. Oh, they're already in field goal range. This is GG's boys. Well, not quite. You're on the 10 yard line for goodness sake. Why would you throw? Okay, I'm not even gonna question it. Raiders win and they will take over the hill. Tampa Bay, I'm sorry to inform you, but you're gone forever. Vegas will be defending against the Cowboys. It's time for the heavy hitters to start rolling in. All right, we're gonna pick up things here in the fourth quarter. Here's where we are, 20 to 13, and we got O'Connell on a QB keeper. Why did he do that? I think they just squandered maybe their last opportunity here. Oh man, that's a face palm. Dallas is settling for three, but it's gonna go through and that might be all that they need. We're now down to 12 teams and versus the Cowboys, the Rams. This was a 91 overall versus 78 overall team. And what happened is exactly what you'd expect. Yeah, that was um. Pretty boring matchup, but now Dallas is gonna be able to pick a player from the Rams squad to take. Mr. Aaron Donald, welcome to the Dallas Cowboys, alongside Micah Parsons on the defensive line. The Cowboys' next opponent, oh, the Dolphins. The Cowgirls ended up pulling away a bit, but this game is definitely far from over. I think there's gonna be one more chance for Miami's defense. I don't understand this at all. That's... So stupid, it stopped the clock. Wait, is Dallas in field goal range? Oh shoot, I didn't even realize, they definitely are. For the win, what is happening? What is happening? Why would they ever do that? The Hold My Nuggets play the tournament for absolutely no reason, there you go. Dallas knocks off Miami. The Cowboys have just stolen Tyreek Hill. Oh, by the way, we are officially down to our final 10 teams. And the one that will be attacking are the Philadelphia Eagles. And within no time, the Eagles are off to Dallas to take on the defending King of the Hill champs. It almost seemed like these two teams knew each other with a very low scoring first half, which did pick up a bit a little later on. A touchdown would help a lot. It's not necessary, but big catch there. And play action. Middle. Oh no, Hurst takes off himself. Don't fumble now. Oh! Oh! The Cowboys picked it up. That's game. Why didn't he go down? Yep. The Cowboys capitalized off the turnover, keeping them on top of the hill again. Dallas is in desperate need for a center. And what a better team to snag one from than these guys. Up next to Dallas were the Kansas City Chiefs, but their offensive line didn't give Mahomes a single chance to do anything. Dallas then stole Patrick Mahomes right from under him. Once again, an incredible defensive performance helped Dallas cut through Detroit like a knife through butter. They solidified their already great O-line with Panay Sewell. Oh yeah. And if you didn't remember Tyreek Hill and Patrick Mahomes are back together and alone they knocked off the Texans and the Steelers adding them Dalton Schultz and TJ Watt we might be at the point of no return with how this roster has panned out look at all these guys over a 90 overall how is anybody gonna beat them I don't know but the team that's gonna give it a shot the Chargers we're just gonna cut it here to the fourth quarter it's not even like the Chargers did that bad it just seems impossible to hold up with this team I mean this is happening like Almost every play, you're witnessing it right here. Dallas has just won another one, and I think we all know who they're gonna be taking. That'll be Derwin James at strong safety. The next team, the Baltimore Ravens. This is one of the best rosters we have left. And just as soon as we thought it was a cakewalk, Lamar Jackson and the Ravens came out swinging. It seemed like they had no fear of the opponents that they were going up against. The Ravens are in such a comfortable spot right now. Just don't get a turnover, and you pretty much have this in the bag. Patrick. This is devastating. Here it is on third and seven. No turnover! Thank you. No way! How is this happening? Boys, if you've been enjoying it so far, drop a like on the video. More than ever appreciate it. The time that this is taking to do. I mean, it's all worth it. I'm having a great time. I hope you guys are as well. I genuinely do. I just can't believe that it could potentially go down like this. And there it is. Completion. Get some pass midfield. That might be a face mask. They gave him 15 on top of that. Can you believe it? Here we go. All day. Hits Dalton Schultz. Look at this. I'd run it straight down their throats. They decide to throw it anyways. Tutty. I think we're going to have a tie game here. Devastating for Baltimore. Welcome to overtime, ladies and gentlemen. Luckily for Baltimore fans, you're getting the ball first. Do not fumble. We've seen this before. What? 
What's up with the fumbling? Why is there so much fumbling? This is crazy. This gotta be the saddest loss I may have ever seen. Kick your field goal and get out of here. Here's the field goal. And that's game. Dallas will remain on top of the hill. Ravens, I got no words for you. Get out of here. Welcome on in, Roquan Smith. Our next team is going to be the Saints. I'm just going to save us all some time here. This game wasn't even close. We'll pick him up, Tyrin Matthew. Next team up, the 49ers. Here we go. Just like that, this game was off. And miraculously enough, the San Francisco 49ers showed that they were here to play. Not only that, but they did not back down for this Dallas Super Team whatsoever, giving them a lead headed into the fourth quarter. Once again, I'm not even for a second going to say this game is over. But holy moly, look where the 49ers have Dallas right now. That's good defense, though. Brock Purdy has been incredible. Three passing touchdowns. This play is so important here. And Christian McCaffrey just ran it on third. It this game is absolutely rigged. I kid you not. The fumbling is so bad. There is no actual way. This is going to go down the same exact way that the last one did, isn't it? Yep, knew it. Look out deep. There's another pass. Oh, no. Patty got the X factor. Look the heck out. Dots are going to start getting laid. They're sending for the end zone. That is as easy as it gets. We are back to a one score game. This is seeming like the Ravens game all over again. We're moving ahead here. This third down and five is going to tell it all. Brock Purdy with his legs. You got to get down. He didn't fumble. It's fourth and inches though. Wow. Patrick Mahomes is going to get the ball. 97 yards with a minute, no timeouts. Oh, wait a second. We got X factors on both sides of the ball. They ran it. I mean, it worked, but why? The sidelines are Dallas's friend. Obviously, San Francisco knows that. What was that? What is this? We're now down under 20 seconds. Tyreek Hill and CeeDee Lamb are out there. And that's a heave. No way. No way. What good defense. Here comes the last play. I hope they try another heave. It's not a Hail Mary, but he is going deep. Oh, my goodness. Nope. Oh, my goodness. That is game. San Francisco. You have just taken over. Dallas's 10 game winning streak has come to an end one game before the championship. Congratulations, San Fran. You are our new king of the hill. Here we go. This is to decide the true king of the hill. We got the Chicago Bears and the San Francisco 49ers. It is the story of David versus Goliath. Our big game started and Justin Fields started connecting an early touchdown followed up by a big defensive stop and some more scoring for Chicago. At this point, they were up three scores heading late into this game. No, I'm just kidding. Bears lost. <laughs> Congratulations, San Fran. You are our king of the hill. Oh.